Hello and welcome to Motoring First. Kartik has gone nowhere. <laughs> I have gone nowhere either. But he has been driving a car that is here all the way from France via Chennai. Correct. Today we're going to talk about the Citroen Chichua Echoche. What? Yeah. So, no, no, you do the accent better than me. What is it? <laughs> Citroen Citroen Echoche. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, this has been a long time coming. Uh, the C3 Aircross was launched several months ago. We've been uh, many of you have asked us for it, and we were waiting to drive one uh, for personal reasons because I had really enjoyed driving the C3. Mm. I thought Citroen as a brand, uh, what they engineered with the C3 was very impressive. How they ended up positioning the product in terms of the price, what the hatchback or SUV, something in between, and the packaging. I think what they loaded into each variant itself. Correct. If I remember so correct. Feature mix and all made it unexciting, but the car itself, I was impressed with it. So I was okay. looking forward to driving this, which automatically the C3 Cross is um, more attractive because it's now going into the meat of the market, right? That way, in terms of size, it's uh, Creta territory. Right, mm -hmm. which is where everybody's attention is and where money is also going, right? So I was looking forward to it. And they, so a little bit of background about Citroen, right? Sure. Uh, they're a brand which is, has a DNA of innovation, right? Okay. So several things that we take as, you know, as normal today, right? Mm. Like is part of their uh, innovation journey, right? Monocoque, uh, front wheel drive, mm. right? Uh, hydro pneumatic suspension, you know, the DS and uh, yeah. like iconic cars, right? Yeah. They have uh, two CV, small but light and efficient. Mm. So, a lot of creative work in engineering, right? Mm. So, that is part of the DNA. And it's good to see that it's not just BS, right? right. You could it's see a DS, not a BS. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had to. Okay, so this time I'm going to try and not laugh at his jokes. I try, I, I, but it's damn hard, okay? It's like, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Right? Uh -huh. So, show me say that again. No? Okay, fine. Next one. So, <laughs> it's the DS, not BS. <laughs> okay, fine. So, it's not BS, right? So, you could feel it with the C3. Mm. And uh, obviously, I have expectations from the C3 across. Sure. And um, before I get to that, mm. there is this sense that I have now about Citroen as a brand for India, which is a bit of a concern. Okay. As much as I respect what they're doing on the engineering front hmm. and what cars they're delivering as machines, there is a bit of a clash that seems to be coming across. Okay. Right? It could be an understanding of India itself or what the Indian audience wants hmm. at a core level. Right. Or it could be baggage of the past. Right? So, let's say European brands have been known to be, you know, a little high-handed with the Indian market coming in at prices which yeah. don't really make sense. Yes. Right. Yes. So they have tried to be careful about that hmm. and not uh, not be not be positioned as ridiculously expensive. I would say that it is not high-handed as much as ignorant of the local situation because hmm. you are talking about a narrow use case, and I think it's a broader use case, and it's not just a European thing. It's a lot of brands who come to India from outside. Right. I think they start out by not listening to what the Indian guys are telling them about what happens in our country. Correct. And they say, yeah, yeah, we are German or we are Japanese or whatever, and we know better. Yeah, and this is how think, yeah. business works. You don't know anything. We'll show you. And then that fails the first time. And until that first failure happens, they don't reorient their businesses to understand that India is a very large, but also a very specific and a non-articulate market. Our customers will not walk up to you and say, that's wrong. This should be like this or that price doesn't make any sense. It will become obvious to you when the sales start failing. And if you remember, I think a lot of large brands have had a second innings where they did a lot better because they calmed down about where they come from and started focusing on where they've arrived. And if, if you extrapolate that, then I think Citroen also has to go through the same process. Remember, there are people who didn't get the second innings at all too. Yeah. Like Peugeot had two first innings, but they never had the second innings where they finally found success at all. So, which is why uh, Stellantis chose Citroen to come to India. Correct. So, in history, I have seen international brands come to India and initially behave like they know better than us. And then they've been proven wrong. It's almost, if there is an exception, it'll prove the rule kind of a situation. And it's the second innings of all of these brands where they've done well. So, if the C3 didn't do well the first time, I'm not automatically worried. It's just the normal pattern repeating itself again. Hmm. So, I think these worries, 
right, of getting things wrong, have pushed them almost to the other end, hmm. right? Where I think they've gone with a thought. It almost feels like they were worried about being pricey, hmm. but they've gone so aggressive on that that they are now not feeling premium. Also, yeah, of right? course. So on the C three, there were some misses, like you said, on the equipment front, hmm. which kind of pegged it below even the segment, hmm. right? And made you wonder where this is going, right? right? So there are similar concerns with the aircross as well, hmm. and uh, so the logic of where the brand sits hmm. or what they want to deliver to the end customer, maybe they are not confused, but I am certainly feeling confused about. It, okay, right? Um, having started off on all of that, hmm. I will say that the aircross is a good-looking car. Yeah, right. We've seen it in the flesh, yep. and uh, finally, I've just seen it on roads before driving around, and it looked good. But now seeing it in person. Yeah, I was I was really happy to see how good it's looking. Yeah. So these are the kind of contradictions we'll experience through this conversation, right? The Aircross looks good. It looks different from every other SUV in that space, below or above it. It's distinct. Mm. You know, it's a Citroen. Once you see it, you know what it will be. You're not going to confuse it for anything else. It, it it it's managing to look strong. It's managing to look contemporary, and these are. Easy words to throw around, but to pull off is yeah. and, really hard. And I think historically, French cars have always also looked a little bit out of the ordinary. Right. So you look at the Renaults, you look at the Peugeots, you look at the Citroëns over the years. They have never really tried very hard to fit into what was happening absolutely in the world in terms of design or aesthetic at all. They've mm -hmm. always taken their own route. And I remember the C3 coming in, the Aircross coming in to the studio. And the first reaction was, yeah, that looks different. Yeah, there are different curves and different things going on right. from whatever you normally see on a car. So yeah, on board. So it's 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 amazing that you know it's sharing uh, the platform with the C3, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but you don't immediately think, yes, the face looks familiar because the headlamps and the LED DRLs and all of that is the same. But you look at the size of it; it does feel bigger. It feels more muscular. You don't think of it as just a bigger C3, right? Correct. It looks like a different vehicle on its own, and I think they've done things cleverly. The wheel arches are nice and puffed out. Uh, the tail section looks really nice, yeah. and uh, the overall shape is is again, it's not out and out SUV. Again, like you know, that's they're doing things their way. You know, yeah. it's different, but it's nice. It's nice, and also in time terms, also it's a nice car because when you look at it from a distance, it looks like 2024. Yes, and then you reach for the door handle, you're like, oh, 1952. Correct. So these are the contradictions that will keep coming, right? So you look at those door handles. I, I'm going to say, fine. I'm, I, I'll look past that, mm. right? Then there's the keyhole, right, which is still there on the door. And today, you the key that you get looks like a almost like a motorcycle key. You don't get keyless entry mm. into the car, right? So all of these things, you look at that car and it looks attractive. It looks appealing, and then you start interacting with all these aspects of the car, and you start thinking. You know what we can do for you, Citroen. This is not a money thing for us. We just want people to have better cars. If you just send us a variant feature list early on, we'll sign a non-disclosure agreement <laughs> with you. And no, you don't have to do anything. Just send it to us. We will take a highlighter and we'll mark in red what feels like a bad idea. Hmm. We'll mark in yellow what is a iffy thing, and we'll just leave the rest of you it alone. It'll take him about what an hour to do this <laughs> and send it back to you. As long as you don't have thirty-five variants like the Nexon EV or whatever. But I'm really, really serious about it. I'm really happy to do this for you because when we see the keyhole and we see that door handle selection, our first reaction is, how could you not understand that this is just the wrong thing to do for this car? So I think this is this brings in another concept, right? Maya, we've discussed this most advanced yet acceptable. Right. Even to be a disruptor, you have to be acceptable. Correct. Right. You have to really push the boundaries, but people should be able to understand. Where you are from, yep. or where you fit in, and I think that has been the challenge with the C3, mm. and I think even with the Aircross that persists, because while in dimension terms, in terms of appeal, it's sitting in that Creta category, yep. and I think now with the pricing, they have shown that making in India that they can deliver this value with the price. It's spanning from 10 lakh rupees to 14 lakh rupees with now the automatic variant, which is the one we drove, mm. the seven seater automatic, right? But with those feature misses, mm. then it doesn't really sit in that segment. Correct. You don't automatically associate the lower pricing as a value pricing. You all like, yeah, but look, it does has it has this, and it doesn't have that. 
And that's the other idea, again, that we as a market are a young market. Mm -hmm. You keep saying it, we're an aspirational market. Yeah. The sensibilities of moderation that Europe might be arriving at, where you say, I just need this much. Yeah, that's yeah we're not anywhere close to that. We're, we're not there. Yeah. I'm not going to say that you're, I mean, Citroen is thinking of India as a cheap market, right? Uh, people don't want features or just want to save costs. That's been proven. That's not the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember driving the Dacia Duster uh, from uh, Paris, in fact, down south towards Italy. And it was a nice car to drive. And this is before it came to India. This so was, I think, Geneva to Paris. No, we drove to the Ferrari factory oh. back in the day. We were doing a story with Ferrari, whatever. And driving the Dacia, Bert and I were driving together. We were in overdrive at that point of time. And we were both impressed with the car itself. Right. And we were completely unimpressed with the spec of the car because in Europe, a utilitarian car with mm. no extra features like the Dacia Duster was a completely normal thing. And we said, if they launch it like this, it's dead in the water. right? Yeah. And when Renault did bring that car to India, the fact that they upgraded the interior almost completely, mm. changed the spec, up the trim levels and everything is what sat on the base of a good car and then made it succeed. If you guys had seen the Duster we actually drove mm. from Paris to Italy, you wouldn't want to buy it for any money at all because it looked like a taxi inside. Mm. You know, so what he's saying is spot on. We are aspirational. We want our cars to look premium. The biggest example of this is perhaps the Toyota Etios, which is such a fantastic three box car. But the only place where you're willing to sit in one is at Bengaluru airport to spend the next two and a half hours getting to the city and that's it. And that is a great example because I mentioned the Europeans at the start, but even the Japanese have made this mistake. And Toyota, yeah. one of the biggest ones with the yeah. Etios and the Leva back then, right? So, uh, coming back to the C3 Aircross, and we were at design, but we made many jumps through that. But the, all these ideas are core to where the C3 Aircross is misstepping, right? And in this regard, as to what is the core value, there are other things that we'll talk about when we talk about driving as well. So, in this regard, about appeal, those small features on the outside that are misses. Okay. Just to simplify this, what would you change in terms of these little, little things that would immediately say this is an aspirational car, there are no um, small misses? Uh, headlamp upgrade. Hmm. It might not be a functional thing, but it's an aspiration thing, right? Uh, from an LED standpoint, LED projectors is what people will look for. Okay. Um, I think the keyhole definitely needs to go. It's not just an aesthetic aspect. It's also functionally. I want a keyless entry system today. Yeah. And I'm spending 15, 16 lakh rupees on a car. And I'm willing to spend that much. I should be able to get that. Yeah, and even right. Ola's works eighty percent of the time. So, and uh, and if you look at the rest of it, like the, every all the lighting on this car is, I mean, the functional lighting is all halogens. The mm. tail lamps look really cool. They're halogens. Yeah, they're not LEDs. They've done that well. Superb. No complaints. The alloy wheels, gorgeous. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. They really look good. Yeah. So, other than that. There's not much that needs to be so fixed on that. Door front. handles, keyhole, and LED projector headlamps would solve 90% of what's keyless entry. And keyless entry would solve 90% of your challenge of here's a premium car, oh, it's almost premium. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. Dimensionally, it's much bigger than the C3, of course. It's in fact, uh, it has the longest wheelbase in the class now. So it's okay. a sizable car. Hmm. Uh, it's taller than most of the cars in the segment. So basically, it has presence. It looks good. It's yeah. not going to feel small for the segment or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's not a small car. No, no chance. You right. will not mistake it for something that became too compact. No. Mm. Then when you get on the inside, there's a mix of sensations. There's lots of familiar bits. It's basically using the C3's dashboard mm. and a lot of the other bits like the steering wheel, the switches right. and all of that, right? So functionally, no issue, right? Well made. Mm. Well put together, feels like it'll last, durable stuff. Uh, there are upgrades as well. There's a digital instrument cluster now and new controls on the steering wheel. Uh, it's got new seats, more comfortable, and that's been a, obviously a Citroen uh, DNA aspect. Yeah, comfort. because they said comfort is their first thing that yeah. they advertised in Correct. India. Also. And which makes so much sense for India, right? Yeah. Rugged cars that are comfortable. So the seats are a little bit different, they're more comfortable. You sit much higher up. So you don't think of this as a C3 from that standpoint. You sit SUV style, not hatchback style. Mm. Uh, but you do get a sense of that commonality. The A pillar is the same. So the screen is, the windscreen is a little short. It's not mm. as big, right? Okay. So those kind of things mm. where you just think, okay, it could have been a bit bigger on the inside, mm. but you're comfortable there. Right, okay. and the same story in the back. Right, this was the seven seat in the back or the back back. Uh, in the back, not okay. the backpack. In the back, uh, not the backpack. In the back, we'll get to the backpack as well. And uh, in 
<laughs> in the back, you only get a bench, right? And in this seven-seater version, it's a split uh, row. Hmm. So you fold one side down to get to the third row. Hmm. Seats, comfortable. There's enough space, enough, right? For even a six-footer to sit there. There's okay. enough headroom. Uh, there's enough knee room. Not lavish. The twist is, if you opt for the five-seater version, hmm. you actually get 50 mm more knee room. The seat is pushed further. Oh, back. got it. Okay. There's no third row of seats. Right. So over there, the so the bench doesn't move forward and backward. The bench doesn't slide. In the five seater, you just basically get more knee room, so it just will be more lavish. Right. Right. So that's the advantage of the five seater. And between the two, I would pick the five seater. Got it. And I'll get to why. The third row is a token third row. You will use it in emergencies. You will say it's for kids and all of that. Uh, Adults can also spend time in it. To be fair, it's mm. not a great third row. But if you have to compare it like to an Urtica or something like that, those are properly functional third rows. Yeah. Right? They're compact vehicles, Karens, Urtica, even the Triber for that matter. It's got a great third row. Mm. This isn't as good as that. Right. So you'll use it in emergencies or for kids. But if you really don't need that, I wouldn't say you would get tempted with the idea of a seven-seater. Now, this is again an example of their mm. disruption and innovation, and it's great. For somebody who needs that as an option, sure. It's very clever as well because you can easily remove the seats. Yeah, but remember that if you're planning to do the C3 across as a seven-seater, you need to create a family WhatsApp group. And the seven people are coming with you in the car, you need to send them a small message that says, you do not bring anything with you that is not in your pockets. <laughs> because that last two seats is the boot. Correct. Right? My motorcycle boots, I was trying to carry them home. They would not fit in behind the seats and you couldn't close the boot after that. There is literally zero space once the last two seats and the third row are up. There's no space. This is my deadpan face. He's laughing. I, I'm, I'm happy to see the deadpan face. I haven't seen it in a while. Okay. Uh, and yes, he's what he's saying is absolutely right. It's very easy to lift those seats out. It doesn't take a lot of force or effort. Mm. So you should be able to, if you have, if you live in a stilt parking, I think it'll be a little complicated. But if you do have a garage of some sort, mm. taking these seats out and leaving them on the side and using it as a proper, what, five-seater at that point of yeah. time with a boot, mm. uh, like a s substantial boot. Yes, put the seats back very quickly and use it as a seven-seater with like literally no luggage space at all. Also works. Uh, but a really interesting bit in this, from a practicality standpoint, is like, is the five-seater? That has the smaller boot because the seat is set further back right. and the floor is flat. So somehow it has lesser boot space. Yeah. Whereas the seven seater, when you remove the two seats, you have more. It's like 500 something. Whereas the five seater gets 460 or something like that. So when you look, so if you buy the five seater and look down at your knees, you're like, that's one suitcase that could have been in the back. <laughs> So, uh, but absolutely right. This is like, even if you think of seven seat usage, it's meant for city short runs, yeah. which is... I guess doable, but not great. Yeah. Um, so now again, coming back to the misses, right? So this is not going to feel as well equipped as its rivals. Okay. Even if I was not being frivolous, there are some basics today that you end up looking for and you're getting in cars, even segments below, right? Auto headlamps, mm. auto wipers, um, powered folding ORVMs, um, a central unlock switch, right? No way. It's, yeah, you just have to go with the door lock and that unlocks it. Um, second row, the switches for the power windows are centrally mounted between the driver's seats, mm. right? So you got to reach forward to use them. Mm. Um, yeah. So those that, kind of that things. That does not sound, I'm, I'm sorry, but that does not sound good. I, I don't get it. I don't get it because this is the thing. They've done a disruption, right? With this seven seater. Right? Great. Fantastic. How expensive is it? 14 lakhs. Mm. Right? And today you have that category of cars that cost as much as 20 lakhs. Correct. Right? They have this, I mean, they have an opportunity. It almost seems like they're worried to price themselves higher up and mm. be in direct competition with other brands. Right? But today when their service network is only about, you know, dealership and service network is 26 touch points. In the whole country? Yeah. I mean, that's what I, I, I could check out on the map that they have. Mm. There may be one or two, or, or not 26, maybe about 30, okay. right? But that's about 30. Mm. My idea would be that I want to be more aspirational because yeah. hinterland India or tier three cities, tier two cities aren't going to be coming for this. And not yet, at least at any, any day. 
right? so you are talking to the premium as audience as it were you might as well give them something and that new. is part of their brand yeah that is part of the visual imagery and the feel of the car but these messes just miss e. right and on on that same note the interior which i thought was great in the c3 hmm. now when i go into the air cross and i look at it from the price point that it's sitting at i think it should have been better right is the same fabric same materials carried over so the seats have different materials of course okay. they are leatherette on this top spec version that we drove but the dashboard the plastics are the same hmm. they've used different colors um the green and all it's nice but just now in the in this segment right and i'm going to put aside the price aspect but you look at benchmarks now being set by um uh, the seltos hmm. even the honda elevate hmm. right you have the creta these cars are setting really good benchmarks in terms of perceived quality yeah. right which give you that sense of lavishness mm. and i think that maybe they benchmark french cars instead by mistake for these parts of it rather than the competition segment uh, the competitor cars ha oh. hmm did you so uh, this, so the plastics aren't where the game is at in this class at least so if i have to play with the levers and say okay that remains you get more features fine mm. no worries okay we'll make peace with that mm. it's still a sensible car and it's giving me all the stuff that will help me enjoy this car mm. for the next 4 years yeah i won't feel like i've missed out i'll live with those plastics no problem they're not bad they just not as cool as some of the rivals are they poly made no are they poly finished no do mm. they look bad no it's fine mm. but, but it could have been better it could have been better but that i could do without but the other things mm. it should have had understood right We, and we're not even talking about the wow features uh, are there any i'm saying forget about wow features it doesn't get auto air conditioning as well right it's manual like those large rotary knobs what did you guys just do with this car i don't understand it's confusing it's it, no it is confusing but okay so clearly on the c3 when they debuted with that car they had issues trying to balance the uh, feature spread in the variants trying to manage the pricing and all of that and they made some errors do you think that they made fewer errors with the c3 across at least c3 across again with this idea of innovation and disruption i think with the c3 across got stuck as well was is it a hatchback or is it an suv hmm. it sits in between and as we know anything that sits in between yeah it's either trouble. magic or it's gone yeah hmm. so i think that was another place where it got stuck because it was expensive uh, looking at the hatchbacks right hmm. it was it should have been priced low Mm-hmm. but it wasn't that competitive and that compelling if i look at the pricing of the c3 across it's a lot more compelling mm-hmm. right given the size of the vehicle the space the comfort the comfort was there as well but this has space this has a lot more practicality it's fighting strong on those attributes mm-hmm. right if anybody were to buy this car and drive it they'd be happy with it if somebody makes peace with all those aspects right and says i'm okay So these are barriers that Citroen has erected in front of a car that is actually quite nice. I think, yeah, and I <laughs> honestly, this car, and that was then the C3 as well, and here even more impressive hmm. is the way it drives. Like at high speeds, I'm going to put it this way: at a hundred, hmm. the sense of casualness in the air cross was similar to driving, let's say. a creta seltos whatever at 70 oh wow 60. it's casual very nice it's casual right it doesn't have the horsepower advantage it's got a it's only coming with the 1.2 liter turbo petrol okay and we drove the automatic 6 speed automatic not a dct so regular torque converter tried tested uh right smooth quick oh nice yeah like it's performance amazing like actually when i started driving the car at first in the city right got it, getting out of office i was like does this have drive modes because mm. it's that quick oh very nice so if citroen can get people to the showroom not look at the car not look at the interior and just start with driving the car they'd have more conversions yeah i had to relearn how to use the throttle because i had to go more gentle i had to use less throttle inputs it's that Oh that's that light on its that's feet. That's awesome. I In love fact, it. In uh, fact, Aditya Akli, uh, we were driving it and he said, "Karthik, this feels so light." That was his first statement. I'm like, "What do you mean?" It's like, "No, it's just so light in the way it's driving." And I was like, "That's absolutely right because it just moves." 
Like nice. there's no resistance, there's no hesitation. It just goes. Very right? nice. And at the same time, so we spoke hundred. Even at a hundred and forty, the composure that this car has mm. is incredible. Incredible. Nice. Right, so its driving aspect is just boom. Best in class, you think? We'll get there. We'll get there. So it's right there. Okay. Right. So if you ask me from a dynamic standpoint, hmm. is this the best balance? I would say probably. Wow. I would say probably. Comfort-wise, also probably. That Because is a huge, huge compliment. It's great at low speeds. You hear the bigger bumps. But I was sitting in the back seat when Aditya was driving, and um, I couldn't feel them. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, I couldn't feel them. So you're sitting easy in your seat. I can, I know that that was a rough bump that we just went over, but I didn't move around. Hmm. I just sat there comfortably. And Citroen are traditionally very good with suspension. It is a yeah. traditional strength for this brand. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, I just remember no ventilated seats either. Of course. Yeah. So yeah, we keep moving. Uh, so, <laughs> so driving dynamics, great, mm. right? Now again, we come back to the contradiction. Ouch. Cruise control. No, don't tell me. Come on, man. Guys, honest to God, I can't tell you. This is heartache for me as well because it's such a good machine. Mm. Um, cruise control, not there. Right? So, like the Himalayan then. So, <laughs> noise insulation. Should have been better. Okay. This engine doesn't sound very nice. Okay. Right. It's it's okay. It's smooth. It's smooth. It's not. It's a three cylinder, so you don't feel that aspect of it most of the time when you're driving around. Okay. Just that when it's warming up the first time around, that's when you feel it a bit hmm. uh, and hear it a bit. But after that, no. Okay. But this engine doesn't sound pleasing. Okay. Right. If it had better sound insulation hmm. for the car as a whole, the experience Then would have be been so further away from you, so it would be better. Yeah. Now, in that regard, I can draw a benchmark. The elevate is super noisy, right? Mm. It's not that bad. Okay. Right, but mm. it could and should have been better. Okay. Right. Mm. And my biggest issue with the C3 Across is why doesn't it have the 1.2 liter naturally aspirated engine? Mm. It's available only with the turbo petrol. I have thought that engine to be super. The okay. naturally aspirated engine, very drivable, very like really like it didn't have an automatic. The C3 never had the automatic, mm. and I didn't think it was a big issue, right? Because it's so easy to drive. Same thing applies for the turbo as well. Okay, mm. let's get that out of the way. This is a great engine to drive, even with the automatic. Right. But the fuel efficiency is not going to be great. The any was more fuel efficient. At least right now, this automatic and turbo combination, whatever we saw, okay, is not. A fuel efficient engine, okay. so that entire aspect of being cost sensitive, of mm. being a very rational choice, of being a very uh, logical decision, kind of falls flat with. But that goes with how the French work, right? I'm not smiling. You not? He's not smiling at all. Not at all. Right. So, <laughs> the logic is not hooking up across this car for me. Got it. Right. I think that this should have had. The one point two, any, you can say that it doesn't have as much performance, but are people really looking for that kind of? No, performance? because how you're describing the performance of the turbo petrol, you're saying it's almost too much, and I'm having to relearn to use less to get the same job done. So if you had a engine with less performance and more fuel economy, that would immediately be a benefit. Yes, and let's be very clear: if you're thinking functional, if you're thinking Indian market, people don't complain about lack of performance. Yeah. Let's take the Grand Vitara for example. The mm -hmm. strong hybrid is their flagship, right? Even the high rider, but they have the 1.5 uh, four-cylinder NA, right? Which is a very mild-mannered engine. Correct. It's not a great engine to drive, mm -hmm. but it gets the job done. It's great to commute within the city. It's very efficient. Yeah. You will leave the remaining 20% aside and say, "I'll deal with it on the highway." Yeah. It's okay. Correct. Right? Here, it's like it excels on that front, mm -hmm. but on the One aspect which will be crucial from a logic standpoint, mm. it doesn't yeah, work, problem. Mm. right? So that miss of the 1.2 NA is something I can't make sense. And it's of. also a packaging decision. It is somebody at Citroen saying we should offer this engine on this car also. Let's not do it. That's it. That's a great question because how does that work when everything else is so value focused? Right. 
how could this have been skipped? This is an aspiration focus. Yeah. Right? That we must have a turbo petrol. Honda doesn't have a turbo petrol. Mm. Right? They have a NA standard, their old school 1.5. Correct. Right? Yeah. So, and that engine, I'm sure it would be just as easy to drive if it wasn't going to be as fuel efficient. Let's say. Mm. How much lower do you think the price would have also gone with that engine? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That would have multiplied the disruption factor further. Yeah. And that engine is available on the C3 as well. Both Correct. these engines are available. So I don't see why it could not have been offered here as well. It's a good question. We should ask Stellantis. We have. The 1.2 Turbo has witnessed extreme popularity for the sheer exuberance displayed in its performance. The C3 Aircross is first and foremost an SUV and demands the optimal performance that the car of its size deserves. Do you think that the 1.2 NA will come back later? To this car? Yeah. I mean, I hope it does come. Okay. I really do hope it comes. Because I think it changes the value equation. It brings, aligns a lot of the dots, so to speak, across the spectrum. It immediately lines it up as even better VFM. Hmm. It should improve fuel efficiency aspect. It makes drivability, it's going to keep drivability strong. And uh, let's say it will feel more sensible for more people. That kind of performance, I don't think right now <laughs> is like really the other cars are offering 160 horsepower like Creta and Seratos. I didn't feel like this lacked horsepower. How much is the difference to this car? Sorry. This is about 110. So it's 50, 50 horsepower. Yeah. And you didn't feel the difference. You know, so we're doing I, I mean, okay. on the highway. Yeah. So we're doing okay. It goes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's got, uh, so just from a spec standpoint, compared to the C3. This engine with the automatic hmm. has more torque. It's got 210 nm. So they've retuned it for this automatic transmission and of course tweaked it to work for this bigger, heavier car. And it works. Yeah, right? good. Yeah. I was going to make a VFM joke, very French motor, but I'm not going to because he has decided not to laugh at any of the jokes. So I'm not going to make VFM value for money, VFM very French. No. Where it's a very serious uh, motoring first Straight style. Case. Right. So to round it off, I think it drives beautifully. As a car, once you get into it, whether you're spending time in the back seat or whether you're the one driving, if you really want to travel, I mean, you will be not just satisfied, you'll find it memorable. Okay. Right? Wow. Yeah. And uh, that's for the people who want to travel. And, but I think for more people, the non-turbo engine with its lower price tag would have made even more sense. Do they have an automatic for it? Great question. If they don't, they should. Okay. I think coming to India with solutions arriving along the way hmm. is not a great way of doing things. Because, and I saw this with several people who, when the C3 Across came, were excited, but they were invariably like, oh, I'm going to wait for the automatic. Yeah. And what invariably happened was they shouldn't wait for the automatic. They bought something else. Correct. Yeah. Right. So I think that's something that they need to fix. Uh, is this a safe car, Karthik? From the way it drives, I think hey, it's... No, no. Who cares about how it drives and all? Chai. Safe car in India is only about how many stars did it get? What are you Doesn't talking about? <laughs> it's like you're not plugged into the reality of our <laughs> Correct. country I, only. I am disconnected from reality. So, as far as my reality tells me, this car doesn't have um, third-party crash test ratings as of now. Okay. It's obviously met the Indian norms, which is 55 right. kmph. Yeah. But in terms of equipment, it only gets dual airbags. There's not even an option of six airbags. Hmm. It does get ESP hill hold, but... No, no, you had me at two airbags. It's two and a half stars per airbag, right? No, it's not. I'm kidding. If you don't, you really need to look up how Wait. the stars are acquired. Hmm. Don't laugh. This is not funny. This is a dead serious thing. Yeah. Okay. Is this going to Bharat new vehicle assessment? Uh, th that's their choice, right? Uh, do you know if it is or you don't? I don't. Okay. And I, I would like, okay, I'm just going to put it that I would not be worried about that aspect of the car. Hmm. When I'm, if I'm looking to buy one, okay. it feels well made. I've always said this. I would much rather have a car that drives really well. Hmm. It always gives me a sense of being in control and not tiring me out while driving. So right. I can be focused on what I'm doing instead of trying to just get to my destination. Right. Sure. So I think that it does really well. So hmm. great. So you think it's a safe car? The safety equipment could have been up a couple of notches for sure. It should have definitely. And there are no crash test ratings outside of the fact that because it's on sale in India, it must have met a 55 kilometer an hour crash test requirement, which is the basic that all cars have to meet anyway today. Hmm. All right. Okay. 
Now here's how you can make sense of it. Okay. Given its price point, hmm. right? A lot of sub four meter SUVs today hmm. cost about fifteen lakhs ex showroom. Right. More than that, sixteen lakhs ex showroom. Right. If you are not hung up on features, right? Hmm. If you want a solid car that's good to drive, this becomes an interesting option, hmm. and it would have been. The disruption that they were probably aiming for, if it had more of the feel-good factor, right? So right now it is still with a caveat that it, you can make sense of it that way. That for sub four meter SUV price, you I mean this costs about fourteen lakhs mm. ex showroom said, yeah. for the automatic with hundred and ten horsepower, which is pretty close actually to the Elevate, right? For okay. its Lower spec automatic, right? For its entry level automatic, that's so. This is the most affordable automatic you can buy in this size range, right? Right. So it's it is a very compelling product from that standpoint. Hmm. Uh, is it a real seven seater? They also don't call it a seven seater. They call it a five plus two. So basically, those jump seats are optional. So would I compare it with an Urtiga or a Carens? No, I wouldn't. Hmm. Right. So this stays in that space of the. Five seat SUVs, mm. Kretas and all, in terms of space, comfort and all, it works. But in terms of the features and all, it doesn't. So if somebody is value centric and is looking at the lower segment, this would still be interesting. So the C is not for clarity. The C is not for compelling either. I don't know what the third C is for at if, all. If it, does it sound compelling to you? Okay, no, it doesn't. I mean, it it sounds like every time you tell me this is a great reason to buy a car, you also take two steps back and saying they're misdoing this. Trust me, I feel so bad about it because I enjoy it. Okay, let's talk about the third C so that we can start winding this up. Competition. Yeah, so competition is spread out like this, right? Because of oh, so you don't even know who the real rivals are in that sense. Because think about it, it's a seven seat at mm. one level. So who do you compare it with? Do you compare it with the Urtiga? Do you compare it with uh, Carens? Do you compare it with the Triba? Uh, on the other hand, or uh, because there's nothing else that, or do you compare it with an Alcazar, which you can't because that's bigger. Mm. Right, and even the Carens is bigger, but it's not directly comparable with them, right? Um, I wouldn't compare anything to the Alcazar, right? If it doesn't sell, what the hell is the point of comparing anything to it? I think Carens has done such a good job. The Alcazar just, uh, yeah, hmm. uh, their sisters, huh? By the way, Alcazar and Carens, ignorable. Then you compare it with its direct rivals, and it again becomes a question of if you don't want this, this, then okay. So the closest I can come to is like somebody wants an automatic, affordable, um, at this low down in the price range. Mm. Uh, your other option is the Elevate, right? Mm. If you go higher up for the upper variants, then you're going to the 15 plus. Correct. Right. Then there is in, a massive price gap in place, so it doesn't matter anymore. And then also, then you get into the space of the Creta, the Correct. Seltos. Then it's a non-starter, the right. argument, right? right? Because the experience is somewhere else altogether, yeah. right? In terms of uh, aspiration, right? So wow, you, this is a really strange motoring first. Dude, trust me, I I had warned you that this is going to be a long conversation because, uh, yeah, because this car is just it's it's almost as if it's refusing to make sense. It's like the sense I am getting is that you would buy a C3 Across by the process of elimination rather than selection. Somebody in your family will have to be the nerd who will basically eliminate the factors which lead to the C3 Across being the last thing less left on your list, and therefore you buy it rather than what we normally do, which is we select upwards till we reach thing thing. No, you cannot do better than this. This is the vehicle that we should get. And there are so many reasons to actually, you know, like like I said, you drive it, you it'll be it won't just be satisfying; it'll be memorable. The small stuff, right? It's like I'll give you a small example, like the MID, the digital display, right? So the trip meters for uh, you know your two trips, nicely laid out, simple. You get your distance, mm. you get your FE, and you get your average speed. Awesome. The three things pieces together works. Yeah, it gives me such a nice snapshot of my trip. Easy to use, simple layout, touchscreen, nice. Mm. Steering feels good to hold. A small, nice, chunky little thing. Mm. Great seats. All right. All right. Wow, that was really confusing. Should I attempt a quick summary now? My God. Should I? I Should I? Are you challenging you're me? You're the star. Are you challenging me? I challenge you. All right. Karthik has been driving the Citroen C3 Across. We realized that the car has been out for a long time and for a whole bunch of reasons we haven't gotten to this car yet but now we have and we are uh, let's call it we took 10 steps towards happy and then took about six back towards what happened here 
okay let's start at the top because the rest of the motoring first has been a little bit up and down so let's stick with what it does really well and karthik said a very important word there that if you drive the c3 across you will find it a memorable car to drive that is a very uncommon quality in cars and what he's basically saying is if you ignore the spec sheet and what else is going on which i will talk to you about in a minute but if you ignore all of those things and just focus on the experience of driving this vehicle it's really good and don't be fooled by the turbo petrol's 110 ps uh, power output because they have worked on the torque output to match the automatic that we drove and on the highway this car gives nothing away in terms of performance or feel to some of the 150 bhp suvs like the creta or the celtos which is an extremely impressive trick to pull off citroen has pulled off a bunch of tricks in here and they fail to pull a whole bunch of other tricks another thing that they've done really well and citroen usually does this well is suspension this is a really comfortable car and karthik says in the front row and the middle row both you will be extremely comfortable you might even hear the bumps being hit but the chances that you'll feel the bumps being hit it doesn't happen very often which is awesome the trick that they've missed the car doesn't have enough sound insulation and this engine is not a very nice sounding engine although it's a very good engine to drive which means if the car's cabin was a little bit quieter your sense of isolation would be better and your sense of this is a premium car would be a lot stronger than it is right now and that sense of premium versus function is what this car is most challenged by some of it is their engineering some of it is their thought process some of it is just how they selected what goes into the aircross and what should be left out okay so since we're inside the cabin let's talk about that uh, it shares a lot with the c3 hatchback and that's not a bad thing because there are lots of nice design elements in there the cabin has things that are premium and there are things that will annoy you and destroy that sense of premium so if you're sitting in the middle row for example the doors don't have the power window switches there in the middle which means you'll have to lean forward to do it which is a little bit of an experience ruined slightly and there are small details like this throughout the interior and the exterior on the outside you still have a keyhole there is no keyless entry the doors are just the sort of thing that the maruti 800 used to have at launch slightly styled up but in today's day and age, they could have certainly done better door handles. It should certainly have had uh, keyless entry. Uh, similarly, Karthik was saying if the headlights had LED projectors instead, you'd get a better sense of, oh, this car is a little bit more premium. And this kind of small niggly things are all over this car. So the prices start at 10, they go up to 14. So in on the face of it, it's a really value for money car, but you don't have the experience of this being a premium value for money car. It's so hardcore value that it reduces the aspirational value of this car. And again, like I said, you took 10 steps forward and then we walked of them back if you compare the c3 across prices and just step over that budget and look at cars you'd get for say a lakh and a half or two lakh rupees more which would be or let's say the entry level elevate or something like that the experience changes so much that suddenly the uh, aircross doesn't look like a disruptor it looks like it almost arrived and then didn't and if you get to the top end of creta and saltos it's all like a whole different experience level that's the trouble that we're having with this c3 the Aircross has so many good things going for it. And in each one of those departments, Citroen has walked back a few steps on various critical things that make you think like, why did they do that? Because they were so close to getting it right. In the same breath, Karthik pointed out that the basic C3, it does get a 1.2 naturally aspirated engine, which is a great value for engine. It's very good to drive. It has higher fuel economy and it would lead to a lower price point. For what reason, we don't fully understand, but it's not in the C3 Aircross at all. So this car is a story of how good Citroen is at at so many specific things and how they've got the specking of those things wrong in various places. Think about it. Today, you put a story out on Marutis, on Kias, and the, everything in the conversation comes back to safety rating, safety rating, safety rating. The Citroen's not yet been tested and that's fine. Okay, happens. Is it going to the Bharat New Vehicle Assessment Program? We don't know. Okay, that happens. It must have met the 55 kilometer hour frontal crash test because that's the Indian norm. Fair enough. But it has two airbags. And as soon as you say two airbags, I know that your antennas are up. It's these kind of small additions and subtractions all over that car that are really frustrating Karthik because Karthik thinks he drove a very nice car just now, which is having a lot of trouble recommending to you also right now. Have I got it? Super. And yeah, that, that was a tough one. <laughs> so a couple of things that I missed out on talking about uh, earlier. The seventh seat version gets a roof mounted blower. Okay. It's only a blower. The It's only a blower. Yeah. It's not connected to the AC circuit. No, it basically has an intake at the bottom, hmm. which sucks in the air that's coming from the front and then pushes it backwards. Right. Hmm. So that's only with the seven seater. And so effectively it's a fancy table fan thingy. Yeah. And that doesn't feel like great quality either. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, I only looked at it, but it didn't look like. Yeah, the vents and all feel flimsy. 
yeah. and it's noisy as well so not very useful hmm. the air conditioning system itself has been powerful on the c3 and this also they say has been tuned to that so level 1 it felt fine when i was in the front seats but when i was in the back seat um at level 1 it didn't feel good enough i think they need to calibrate the level 2 and 3 a little bit better because i think there's a big step between level 1 and level 2 okay. which needs to be a little bit gentler and i will emphasize again to drive even around corners it was so satisfying mm. right so yeah uh, i didn't know if i had emphasized that enough or not kartik's basically saying if you drive this car you'll probably have a very very nice experience around corners over bad roads down the straight highway even commuting the automatic works it's all going to be great but when you start trying to calibrate the purchase decision which is does it get these features which variant should i get what spec should i get that's when the how do they say it nowadays intrusive thoughts will start <laughs> winning and then you may not end up with a c3 across because it makes sense at so many levels and then it sort of doesn't right after that when you start looking at it closer so once again i think this did happen with the c3 for citroen india where they got a lot of the car right and then they got some very basic fairly obvious aspirational aspects of the car wrong and i think that's happened again with the c3 across i did put karthik on the spot by asking him have they made fewer mistakes this time and he was not able to give me a clear answer so in that sense i was trying to establish is there a trend that citroen india is getting closer to getting a car completely right we can't say that for sure right now and citroen i think there should be more clarity about where the products are being positioned and commit to that i think that's all that's needed yeah there's a, a a fourth c that we haven't mentioned so far the french word is courage sorry you said you won't laugh i'm trying i'm getting there which in english is pronounced courage which is basically another c is involved in this is called conviction which is once you have a great product and i can tell you from what kartik has told me you do have a good product have the courage have the conviction to stand behind your product and say no we will command more money for this product because it is a good product indian audiences are not stupid if you make a product that makes logical and aspirational sense nobody has ever failed in india will you defeat maruti on day one no it is going to take you the next 160 years to do it nobody else has been able to do it so you certainly aren't going to do it has anybody defeated the creta yet another car with a c no you're not going to be able to defeat the creta but will you find a successful tow hold in india yes you will make a logical product make it aspirational enough and give it a reasonable price there is no way that this can fail at this point you have to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory that's the only way to do it i know it sounds like rocket science but it's not you have to you have the other way around no you it's to, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory if you can't right even do you this. are yeah. Achha, oh yeah yeah there are so many jokes to be made here but i'm going to uh, hold back Many of them are super offensive too. If we meet in person at some point, ask me. And I'm going to say this that I'm not kidding. I was genuinely. I came back to office and I was talking to Akash, uh, who's one of the mad scientists behind motoring. And I was telling him I felt genuinely sad at one point while driving that this it was coming to this that I was thinking that I'm disappointed with this. despite it being such a good machine and i i know kartik very well now so i i know that he gets really distraught about this it's not just a testing thing for him saying oh one more product that so it's it's not like oh one more car and one more car that didn't quite make it it's not he actually feels it he's like this is such a great car and people are not going to buy it and experience it because they couldn't put enough airbags in it or whatever it is you know half the time people are too busy packing in features into cars and they forget about making a great car and that's why i think people are falling out of love with cars in yeah. the first place because they're not great to drive here you have a car that's a fantastic machine and deserves to be recognized and deserves to be experienced so that more people can say i love driving right and not because of uh, i have dual zone air conditioning and i have heads up display and i have this and a connected car not because of that because it's great to drive and <laughs> yeah okay so i think do you have anything more to add apart from how upset you are about this whole thing no i think i'm done <laughs> I told him I was going to keep it light and easy today. <laughs> so the air conditioning at level three may or may not work. He's upset level three for sure now. Like the back rows are feeling the heat and all. No, the back back rows. <laughs> back back rows. All right. Are we good? Do you have any more questions? No, I am good. I wanted to understand where it goes and sits, and clearly it's a slightly confused position. So my questions are answered. Am I surprised that this is a good car to drive? No, not really. Whatever I have heard about Citroens over the years, they're generally good cars to drive. I did hear the C3 issues with settling into a pattern that makes sense to India. 
and I'm hearing the same thing again for C3 across. And it's all the more shocking because the, lo- the management, like Carlos Tavares, the CEO, he was part of Renault when they did the quid for mm. India. So they know India. They should know India. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is why it's all the more surprising. Anyways, hopefully this is the last time we'll be talking about Citroen this way. I really do hope so. And that's up to you. Thank you so much for watching Motoring First. Uh, if you haven't answered anything specific to the C3 Aircross or any other vehicle that you'd like to discuss, just leave us a comment. We do try to answer all of our comments. It's a job that gets harder every week and we really push very hard to do it. So don't be shy. Go for it. We'll get back to you. If there's anything else as usual, anything else at all, use our DMs on our social media channels, use the comments, whatever you prefer. This podcast is also on Apple, Spotify, Amazon and Google if you'd like to listen to it instead. And thank you so much for watching.